Today, we're gonna go over how to install the Kurt Tire Link Auto Tire Pressure Monitoring System. My good friend Connor here is gonna show you how to do it in just five easy steps. Yes, sir. So what's great about a tire pressure monitoring system, we're gonna be able to monitor the pressure, but we're also gonna be able to monitor the temperature. And if you ask me, monitoring temperature is a more significant sign of a potential blowout than necessarily just pressure. So let's go ahead and show you how to get this installed. First things first, you wanna go ahead and level and chalk our RV here so we have a nice stable surface to work on. Now, one thing to note, if you are gonna be relying on the internal battery, you probably wanna mount this in a spot that's easy to access so you can remove it from the bracket like so. If you're opting for a more permanent hardwire installation, you can tuck it away and hide it a little bit more. But with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and remove the tire link from the bracket here, simply depress this tab and pull straight up. So we're gonna go ahead and hold up this bracket on the frame where we want to mount it. And we're gonna take some sort of marker, whether we have a pen, a pencil, or a paint marker here in this case. And we're gonna use that to mark each of these four holes here on the frame. That way we can drill them through. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hold it up here where I want it, picking the final location. It's probably a good idea to make sure it's centered on the frame so it's not too far down or too far up. You can measure to do this or you can just eyeball it. It really doesn't matter and make sure it's relatively straight and not crooked to one side. And once we do have our location, we'll just go ahead and mark each of these four holes. So now we're ready to attach our bracket to the frame here. Now in our kit, we're gonna get these self-tapping screws. So you can go ahead and use these to just mount them directly to the frame here. These are self-tapping, so they should drill their own hole. However, based on the thickness of the frame here, you're gonna have a hard time doing that, especially with the Phillips head on here. So what I recommend is just drilling a small pilot hole in each of these four, and that's gonna make securing the screws a lot easier. So before we get started, you wanna make sure we have the proper safety equipment. So we have some gloves as well as some glasses. So I'm gonna start by taking a punch and making a mark in the center of each of these four holes. That's gonna help ensure our drill bit doesn't slip and it's right where we need it. So now we're gonna take a three 30 second inch drill bit. And we're gonna drill through each of the holes that we just marked previously. Now I'm gonna do a couple bursts here just to get the hole started. You do need to look behind the frame to make sure you're not gonna be drilling through anything. This is a box frame, so there's really nothing that we could drill into, but it's just a precaution we need to take so we don't damage the trailer. So now we'll go ahead and take our impact with a number two Phillips bit, and we're gonna be securing this bracket to the frame. So I like to go ahead and put the screw through the bracket there, line it up with our pre-drilled hole, and tighten it the rest of the way. Now we started using an impact to form all of our holes here, but I went ahead and just switched over to a manual screwdriver when we're tightening it that last little bit. So again, we don't strip out the holes or we do not crack the bracket. So now that we have our bracket secure, we're gonna go ahead and take our repeater here and it's actually just gonna slide down and lock into position. You can see the channel here is gonna align with the groove up here. We'll just simply take it, slide it down until it's locked. So if we're gonna be relying on our internal battery, we can actually just skip to the next step. However, if you're gonna be hardwiring it like us, you wanna go ahead and take your splice in harness here. You're gonna unscrew this little cap on the side, very simple. You're gonna take the plug that matches this on the harness. So there's actually a keyway here. It's only gonna go in one direction. Now, once you line that up and press it into position, it should go in and now we're gonna tighten this locking collar. Now we don't wanna over tighten this. This is a plastic nut. So we don't wanna strip the threads or break it. Just get it nice and snug. And now we're gonna take these two wires here and we're gonna be routing these to our battery. The red one is gonna be for power and the black one is gonna be for ground. So we're gonna to have to find a way to attach these wires to our battery. And the best way to do this, depending on your battery configuration, is to take a set of ring terminals. We're gonna crimp one of these onto each of the wires, and we're gonna use this along with a nut and stud to secure it to our battery. So we're just gonna simply take a ring terminal, make sure you use the proper size for your wire, as well as the size of your terminal. We're gonna place that over the wire, then we're gonna use a crimping tool, and we're gonna secure this. Once we get one done, we'll just repeat the same process for the other. So we're gonna take our wiring here. I just went underneath the frame and over to where our battery is. Again, this could vary depending on where your battery is located. And here you can see that we have the positive terminal as well as the negative terminal. So the red wire is gonna to go to the positive post and the black wire is gonna to go to the negative post. Now that we have power to our tire link, we're gonna go ahead and download the One Control Auto app. 
And once we do that, we're gonna simply press this button here on the tire link. Now we should see a red light illuminate, and that's where we're gonna go ahead and sync it to our device. We'll just simply go to the tire link, and then we're gonna hit pair, and then if pairing successful, you should be able to proceed. So now we're simply gonna to come to either side of our trailer here. It doesn't matter. Now this is a single axle trailer, so there's actually only gonna be two tires we're gonna to have to pair sensors to. First step is to go ahead and remove the valve stem cap here, like so. Now once we do that, we wanna have one of our sensors nearby. It doesn't matter, these aren't labeled. We're actually gonna come into our app and we're gonna be selecting the tire that we would like to pair. Now a good way to think about this is, is if you're driving in your vehicle, the left side is gonna be the driver and the right side is gonna be the passenger. So we're over here on the driver's side, I'm just gonna simply select left. Continue, and once we do that, we can go ahead and screw on our sensor. Now in your kit, you are gonna get this little lock nut here. Now this is optional, we don't have to install it. It's gonna work with your provided wrench, and basically this just works as a jam nut, and it's gonna further secure the tire sensor onto the valve stem, that way someone can't come up and just unscrew it. If you do wanna install this, it's very easy. Simply take off the sensor, and we're gonna begin threading on the jam nut. Now we're gonna thread this all the way down until it stops, and then we're gonna take our sensor, and we're gonna reinstall this. You will get a little air come out, but that's totally fine. Now we're going to butt the jam nut up to the sensor, take our included wrench, and just give it a quarter turn or so. Certainly don't wanna over tighten it. Now, you can't simply just spin off the sensor you must have the tool to remove it. And now that we have one side installed, we're just gonna simply repeat that process over on the other side. Keep in mind how many tires your trailer has, whether it be a single or dual axle trailer. So within these TPMS sensors is a battery. Thankfully, this battery is standard, so you don't have to special order it, but you will have to replace it after a few years depending on your use. Luckily, it includes a little easy to use toolkit here. We're just gonna simply place one of these sides in the bottom of the tool, and then the top one is going to sandwich it like so. We'll simply unscrew these two pieces, very easy to do. And then once we have them unscrewed, we can just take our battery, slide it out, and then install the new one in the reverse order. Keep in mind, you do get an O-ring that comes in your kit. You wanna make sure you go ahead and install that as well. Even if the old one isn't bad, that just does a good job of keeping out water and debris. And you can use the tool to tighten the battery and the sensors back together, just like that. So there you have it, very easy. Definitely something you guys can do at home. Yeah, so thank you, Connor, so much. There you guys have it, like you said, in under an hour, you can have this TPMS hooked up so you can have the peace of mind to help prevent blowouts. Connor, thank you so much Absolutely. again. Absolutely. Appreciate it.